of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Get used to that noise, y'all. This is going to be a good one. Good morning. I hope you're doing well. There are a lot more smiling faces this morning than last Sunday. Weather has been beautiful here, but we are still very aware and prayerful for the continued storm recovery. I think St. John's has its mission work for the next five to ten years, y'all. So, But I hope you've been able to find some solace this week in seeing so many remarkable stories of people helping people. I mean, those have been great stories, but it has been a long couple weeks. So I know this gospel can make us feel uncomfortable. I mean, this story is known as the rich man, right? And it doesn't seem to end well with this young rich man, does it? Although we are not told whatever happened to the man in the story, but he goes away grieving because he had so many possessions. Now, I could easily turn this into a stewardship sermon at this point. (laughs) And stewardship season is right around the corner, my friends, so it is coming. Don't worry, it is coming. But I don't think that this is just a commentary about money or wealth. Although it is a commentary on money and wealth, that's not what it is all about. For this rich man, it was his wealth that kept him from entering into a deeper relationship with God. (laughs) But see, for me, that's the point. It's completely individualized for each one of us. Because we certainly value things differently, don't we? We value things differently. For some people, money and wealth is not the temptation or obstacle that keeps people from a deeper relationship with God. But for each one of us, there's something that holds us back. (laughs) Something that generally holds us back from going deeper. For me, if it's not one thing, it's another. And what I mean is I'm addicted to distractions. I am. Of course, I think most of us are. (laughs) It's hard not to be with the constant barrage of images and messages that are trying to get our attention. So maybe it's not wealth for you, but I think Jesus is trying to get us to look at ourselves to say, what is it? What is it that keeps us from going deeper? What is it for you? Do you know? See, there's something in me that is drawn to God. I think there's something inherent in all of us that is just naturally drawn to God. And I know that a lot gets in the way, but when we can slow down, when we can get out of our normal routines and slow down, we get connected back to God. And I don't know about you, but I feel better. Fall break was this past week, and it helped me reconnect. My wife was talking to a friend of hers who told us about this place in La Follette where there is an observation deck for elk for elk. I know, I'll hurry up, guys. (laughs) And it's elk mating season, and you can go out to this park and walk up this path to this deck where you can watch these elk in this field, and you can hear the bull elk. And it's this ethereal sound, y'all, and I I will not do that noise for you. (laughs) But this is not something my family would normally do. You know, we're regularly in school, doing sports, busy, busy, on to the next thing. But on our break, we woke them up way before sunrise, got them in the car, and took them out there. Now, you can imagine three teenage boys, how excited they were. (laughs) And I cannot confirm that they had an experience like I had. But something about being out there with my family, out with the sun coming up, listening and watching to these amazing creatures, it all connected. (laughs) I no longer felt part of the scenery or that everything else out there, including my family, was part of the background to my life. Does that make sense? Sometimes I feel like everything else is background. Instead, we were all connected together, and the presence of God was visceral. (laughs) And I experienced heaven on earth, or as Jesus says, eternal life. But I had to slow down. And you don't have to go all the way to La Follette. Because that experience made us go out to the UT Gardens and just slowing down out there. You know, they do a great job out there. Where's James? I'm going to embarrass him. Our own James Newburn's out there. He runs it. He does a great job. So we happened to be out there, and there was a plant sale. And so we ran into James, and he took us around on, like, basically a private tour of the gardens. Pretty nice. But at one point, my wife was smelling a rose and said something like, Oh, my goodness, smell this. And I stopped to smell the rose. (laughs) 
And it was wonderful. And it stopped me dead in my tracks again. That is a real thing, to stop and smell the roses. <laughs> no longer was the world just background for my life. Rather, I was fully involved and participating in it. Jesus said to the rich man, you lack one thing. What is that one thing that is keeping you from experiencing the fullness of God? I can give you directions to La Follette and to the UT Gardens, but that only worked for me. And I doubt my kids would describe seeing the bull elk as an encounter with the living God. <laughs> but it worked for me. So what is it for you? Well, you're in luck. Because you did take some moment today and pause and slow down and come to church. Because we got four beautiful babies here that are going to receive the sacrament of baptism. So whatever that one thing is that is keeping you from experiencing the presence of God, put it down for a few minutes. Put it down. Focus on the baptisms. Focus on these beautiful children, on the promises that we will teach them that God loves them forever and ever and ever. That they too are connected to God and to each other and to us and to the world in a deep, mysterious way. Pay attention and slow down and be present with these children and their families. <laughs> this is not just background for our lives. These are our lives deeply connected with one another, sharing sacred moments together. I'm telling you, watch these babies, Miles, Eloise, David, Vivian. You just might encounter the living God. Now, all right, let's get to the fun part and baptize these babies. Amen.